baby and she is lush. She is one week old today. Her name is Winter Rose Seymour and she's actually with Mr. Seymour, her dad in the living room as we speak, having a bit of daddy daughter time. And so I thought I'd do this now because the days have just merged into one big long day and I don't know what day it is, but I know that she's a week old today. So she was born last Friday. And this video is gonna be about the birth. <sighs> Labour is a trip. <laughs> so I was overdue um, by 10 days. And um, I found that really, really, really hard. I was waiting and waiting and waiting and I was doing all of the things that people suggest you do, literally all of the things. So please don't comment below and go, oh, you should have tried this. I literally tried everything. And I am a firm believer in the baby comes when the baby is ready. So, you know, you can drink all the raspberry tea. If the baby's not ready to come, it's not gonna come. I think that people, um, the last thing they try before labour happens is the thing they swear by. So, if that's the case, the workout did it. So I did a workout on Wednesday, last week. The very good, I felt fine. That evening at like 11pm, I had a contraction. It was pretty, it was fine, but I could tell what it was. It was like a painful um, period pain, basically. Um, and it was just something I hadn't felt before, kind of knew what it was straight away, and I was like, shit is on, it's happening, 11 o'clock, Wednesday night. So through the night, I couldn't really sleep very well because they were happening every, maybe like half an hour, but they were manageable, they weren't like completely taking over and I could kind of, um, yeah, I was lying down, I was resting in between them. So, Five a.m. I had a really strong one. I was like, "This is gonna be today. I'm gonna have it today." Felt really excited about it. It was all good. I woke up. I did a couple of Insta stories. I was like, "Okay, it feels like this." In between each contraction, I was fine. Like I was, contraction would happen. It would be painful, but there'd be yeah five or ten minutes in between each, and I could I was totally managing it. So I was like, "I got this down. This is gonna be fine." That happened all day Thursday, so no, no, um, what am I trying to say, progression. I was having them like two or three every 10 minutes for literally like 24 hours, no, nearly 24 hours. So 8 p.m. on Thursday night, I called the midwife, the midwife came round and um, I was like, three centimetres dilated or something like that until 4am my contractions basically were just getting stronger again manageable because in between each one I could kind of talk I could like um, stand up I could I was basically just really tired I'd been up the night before um, and obviously I wasn't sleeping that night so I just I was just really tired I tried to eat loads of food and keep my energy up and stuff, but you're emotionally tired and you you think this thing's gonna happen any minute and it's just draining and so the midwife was really, really lovely. We were just listening to music. I had some candles on. Dom filled up the pool, the birth pool. But something wasn't working. The hose didn't work or something. So he had to manually fill up the birth pool with pots and pans, which took like three hours, bless him, he was he was literally running around like freaking out about it. Um, so by the time I got on the birth pool, it's four o'clock, 4 a.m. And it was bliss. If you're thinking about having a birth, home birth, oh my God, the birth pool was amazing for um, pain relief. Amazing. I felt so, you feel kind of, uh, weight's lifted off you, your pelvis isn't, um, the pressure isn't as bad and it's warm and it's, oh, it just felt amazing. So totally worth it, even though I will tell you why I didn't birth in the pool. I really, really wanted to birth in the pool. Anyway, so 4am, got in the pool. Now was it 4am? 
yeah, or, fuck, I wasn't in the pool for very long then. But it was bliss. So things I think slowed down in the pool, but contractions started getting really severe. So you can do all the workouts you want, you can be as fit as you want, you can be as, you know, physically on it. A contraction is an internal, con it's, it's completely out of your hands. So it's more like a kind of mental game dealing with the contractions rather than relying on your strength or your fitness. So until 6 a.m. I was just having these really strong contractions, breathing through them. I had gas now at this point, which I swear, I'm not even lying, I swear was faulty because I did not feel a thing off that gas now. It was just the noise, it's just a distraction. So 6 a.m. I got checked and I was six centimeters dilated and I was like, come on, please, can I just put, all I wanted to do was push, I just wanted to get in control of the situation and do my bit. I felt like to, up to this point, I was just waiting. I was just waiting around and this could have gone on for days. I was completely out of control um, and I couldn't manage it, as in I couldn't, uh, it's, it's hard to explain, but it was like a mental game up until that point. So six centimetres dilated, this midwife shift was then over, so she called the next round of girls. Um, by this point I had no pants on, I just had a bra, well like a soft bra thing, um, and I was ready to go, I was just ready to push it out. I yeah, I was so tired, my eyes were kind of rolling back and back my head. Dawn was amazing. Partners, whether they're your partners, your birth partners are crucial. Like they, they, he had, I, I got so much support from him, physically, emotionally. He kept like, kept reminding me to drink water because by this point, you know, I was kind of out of it in terms of um, compass mentors. I was, he had to remind me to drink, to go to the toilet, to eat flapjacks, to, I had a candle on, the mother box thing that I got was amazing, it was like massaging me, um, yeah, we were doing all the right things, it just wasn't progressing as quickly as I wanted it to, anyway, so, six centimetres, mm -mm, game on, the new midwife came around, and... I wasn't really paying attention. They, I, one of them said, "Right, how are you feeling? What, what, what do you want to do?" Because my water's not broken, and I was like, "I just want to get it out. I just, I just, I just want to get it out." <laughs> Her, I want to get her out. And so she was like, "Right, let's do this." There's three of them, and they were amazing. They were so lovely. I got out of the pool. The pressure of the water on the in the pool wasn't helping my waters break. I think it was, I don't know, wasn't working. The, the contraction pushing in the pool wasn't working. Got out the pool, felt my first contraction out the pool, squeezed, and my waters broke, and oh my god, the bliss! It was like, it, it was so satisfying. I was like, oh god, thank, thank you. Now things are moving forward. I kind of felt like this was a good step in the right direction and it was so relieving physically. It was like a, oh, it felt amazing. So by this point I was kind of leaning on Dom. I was, pain had kind of got to the point where it was like an, oh, it's hard to describe because it's not really like pain like you've broken a bone or you pain you felt before because it's internal it's literally like someone's churning inside you i tell you what the contractions are like the actual pushing contractions when you know when they say um do you feel like you want to push and it's out of your control when they started happening that so that was from like 8 a.m and i had her at 11 a.m I was walking around the house, <laughs> uh, so it was a bit of an emergency when we came back, but so I was in my bedroom, I was in the bathroom, I was on the toilet, I sat on the toilet 
having the like pushing contractions while the midwives were sat in front of me. Not to go into detail, but it was pretty rough. Um, they didn't seem to care, but I was a little bit embarrassed. Um, so yeah, these pushing contractions are weird. It's basically like when you, when you're being sick, retching completely out of your control. You know when you're, you're like, hum! <laughs> that's what it's like times 100, but pressure going this way. So your body is like. And I could not lie on my back. I could, I don't know how people give birth on their backs lying down in the hospital. Like, no sorry, I was doing that. So I was sat on the loo, I was walking about, I was squatting, I had like, I was like lunging, I was doing all these different positions. So when the pushing was happening, I could, the contractions were happening, I knew, like eight by eight o'clock, I said you can push now. I, that was it, I was, I mean it was hellish, but. I knew I had, it was it was game time, and I just had to squeeze her out. So, yeah, basically, sorry if this is TMI, but they should talk to you like this, I think, in NCT and stuff. This is just normal life, you know. Yes, I did a few little shits, and the midwives, ha midwives had to scoop it out of the pool. They didn't care. I kind of did care quite a lot, but they kept saying it's fine. Um, I didn't care what I was wearing at this point. I didn't care who could hear me. I just wanted to do this job. I just wanted to squeeze her out. There was a quite, it was probably about a good hour between like nine and ten a.m. where I was so exhausted mentally, my eyes were like rolling back in my head, and I was saying to Don like. too small. I kept looking in the mirror and my belly was like, it seemed to get bigger. <laughs> I was like, how is this going to work? It's, it's, I don't think I can do it. And I was asking them what my options were because I was getting to the point where I was like, is this even happening? Like, how the hell is this meant to happen? And the squeeze of the pushing I was doing, I was being quite loud. I was like, like with everything I had and it didn't feel like anything was happening. I was just squeezing. So it was quite frustrating because I, I didn't feel like I was actually contributing even though I was giving it everything I had. But as soon as you start feeling the head squeezing between your pelvis and you almost feel like this <laughs> It's the best way I can describe it. You feel like shit is happening, not literally. But I could feel that, you know, this this was happening. So they were like with their little mirror and they were like, yeah, you're fully dilated, just, we can see the head, go for it. So this is what I did. Right here, one leg like this, holding Dom's hands, and I was squatting down as low as I could. I was also squatting down like this. Uh, out came the baby. So her head came out and it was so relieving. I was like, oh my God, thank God for that. Her head had been in that position for quite a long time, so her poor little head was like a cone. And it was really, really purple and bruised, bless it. Um, and she chat, she chat all up inside me, which is gross. So her head came out with loads of diarrhea and Dom thought I had exploded. <laughs> but I hadn't, thank God. So for some reason I just wasn't worried about that. The midwives were like, um, trying to clear it up. They cleared everything up. So the place is very clean, but um, yeah, so I, 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 by that point I was just so relieved it was, she'd come out, almost. So one last push, the rest of the body came out, boom, done, baby up. Baby covered in shit and blood. Um, obviously the cord's still in, so I like lay down, Don lay down with me and it was like 30 seconds of it out it is mental like the biggest rush of like fuck we just we just made a baby and just had the biggest trauma ever <laughs> it's, it's so weird it's like elation but also like i've just been chased by a lion kind of like you know freaking out so then this is the important part you're not done then 
baby in my arms, kind of didn't care what else was going to happen. I'd torn pretty, I mean like second degree I think, so not that bad, but torn in the A, in the P, and in the B. Just loads of... Anyway, it was too bad for them to stitch at home. And because she'd pooed in the stress of everything, we had to go to hospital. So I was gutted about but also by that point I was like, whatever. So I had her on my arms, Dom cut the cord. You then have to deliver the placenta. You have contractions and you have to push it out. It's pretty, it's pretty. And when everything's a bit of a mess down there and you don't really want anything else to go through it, you've got to deliver the placenta, which is probably about that big. <laughs> But it's squishy. And by that point you kind of don't care. Anyway, so. Baby delivered. Placenta delivered. I was covered in shit. Covered in blood. And the house was literally like CSI. So they had sent me to hospital to stitch me up. Which, whatever, whatever. They called an ambulance. I put, we put a nappy on the baby. I had some... The midwives made jam on toast and tea, and um, I held, I was holding the baby, eating jam on toast, just like, what the fuck just happened? Got in the ambulance, which was quite a wafty walk to the ambulance, if you know what I'm saying. Went to the hospital, stitched me up. I have to say, the likelihood of you getting torn in your pregnancy, especially your first pregnancy, is pretty high. I don't talk to you about this in NCT. The pain of the stitches, but also the um, the injection. Oh my god! The pe the local anaesthetic in and around your vagina when you've just given birth. It's quite sensitive. So that injection is not good. <laughs> It's very, very, very painful, but a whole different pain. It's not like the pain you've just been through, so you can deal with it. You feel like you can literally deal with anything right at that point. So they stitched me up. I had a shower somehow with like holding the baby, <laughs> walking around like, oh my God, what just happened? Clean myself up as much as I could, and we discharged ourselves because they, they wanted us to stay in hospital, but um, oh, I wanted to go home. The reason I had her at home is because we wanted to have a shower in our own house and go into bed and just have like really special time with the baby. So we just discharged ourselves, got home to a murder scene, which was interesting. All of our towels were covered in blood. The floors, the bed, like oh, the pool. So it was a little bit of a like flashback situation, but it was fine. Like. I can't even remember what we did if Dom just cleaned it up or but it was it was just fine. What the hell did we do? A bit of a blur. I think we just went to bed. So just a quick summary. Labour was fine. It's pretty mental. I think Dom's probably more tra emotionally traumatized than I am because you have lots of hormones going on to help you forget about it so you have another one and you know you have nine months to prepare for you know that it's going to be hard you have this beautiful beautiful baby at the end of it and it's just magical yes my nipples are falling off that is another video altogether yes i haven't slept in a week i think honest honest to god i think i've had in seven days <laughs> nine or ten hours sleep max and I don't know how I'm still alive <laughs> um, but I am looking like this so whatever anyway I'm gonna quickly show you my belly I'm gonna quickly show you my baby and that is all I can do for this video oh my god Ooh. so I'm definitely going to make time to do more videos now even though having a newborn baby is mental and you can't Um, so yeah, that's my labour and delivery video. Is winter. 
Say hey. Hey. Oh, sorry. Till next time, I'm going to do a life <coughs> with a grumpy newborn. Um, no, she's not grumpy, she's great. So, next one's going to be, yeah, newborn. First few days of newborn. It's great. It's totally, totally worth the pain of pushing her out. Anyway, 